Harish is a senior from KM and a good friend, and I respect his views. Uh, I s about in 2018, I spent some time, uh, three days in fact, with Stephen Howell. So there is some initiation from there. So that's my backup. Why would I do a kinematic alignment in this case? This is my philosophy for the last few years. I'd just like to run through just a few basics. The mechanical axis actually is not an axis. It is just a weight-bearing line. And that doesn't change where the leg is positioned in space. However, the joint align changes, whether you're in the stance phase or whether you are in your feet together while walking. The joint becomes parallel. We have know about uh, the last 30 years of mechanical alignment, and I was doing that, TBI has cut at 90 degrees. The consequences, why have we done that? Because in, we were told that these knees fail when you give three degrees of varus. And why minimal cut? Because you felt that if you go any deeper, then the tibial component will sink. This paper, very well quoted paper, 6,000 cases where they said that if the tibial cut is cut in less than 90 degrees, then there is a higher rate of failure. Mind you, in this paper, there were no scanograms described. This was just on weight-bearing x-rays that description came. So we've sorted out this problem, a long-term problem, 90% survival, whether it is design-based or whether it is alignment based. This paper, again a 20 year follow up, again a well quoted paper from Mayo, saying that if you have got the alignment to zero to three degrees, they should be surviving more. But at 20 years, even the outliers were matching the group which have been up to three degrees uh, mechanically aligned. The revision rate was higher in the group which had a zero degrees alignment. So is alignment the question, is the question to be asked. Now I, I, I agree with uh, uh, Dr. Bende. No, it need not necessarily be alignment as the only issue. There could be multiple factors. Could alignment be one of the issues that we need to address? Now what is the, look at the literature in the normal alignment. You have Ekoff, which says just about 2% in the neutral mechanical axis. The Ranawat Award paper by uh, Johan Bellman saying that again, the proximal alignment in 32% of them are in varus. You have Hirschman who looked at normal CT studies of normal population and look at the number of people in neutral alignment is about 11%. Uh, you have uh, Dr. Arun Mulaji's paper studying 2000 cases with X-ray scanograms and look at the neutral 11%, intra-article about 38%. So effectively you are looking at 48% who you can kind of intra-artically correct with a mechanical knee. The others, the X-ray that has been shown probably comes in the 3A category where there is a uh, extra articular deformity. So if you have these various alignments, mm -hmm. is one alignment the only option? Now, there is no jugad here. If you look at the condylar axis, MRI study done by Ekoff as well as by Stephen Howell, they have said that if you study these, the center of this condylar axis it goes from lateral to medial as opposed to the trans epicondylar axis. So that is the axis you need to know. You don't need to know any 3D dimensions. What about the implant? A single radius implant looks like is a better option. It gives you a better quadriceps uh, uh, lever arm to work. What about the balancing of the gaps? Again, study shows that if you have to have a good function and a, a little bit of uh, uh, translation, the lateral side needs to be a little laxer compared to the medial side, as shown in the studies that the lateral side is more lax. If you want to squat and the typical rollback, you need to have a little bit of lateral laxity. So uh, we are not aligning these ca cases correctly is a suggestion that I'm making. The gap should not be balanced equally. So the goal of the TKR is basically to reproduce the same pre-arthritic state and the expectation is you get a better functional outcome. Now this is the key, the studies showed that the cartilage thickness is on an average two to three millimeters. Uh, and you, as if you resect your bone cuts, matching the, uh, the cuts and replacing whatever you have lost, you should be in a position to kind of get that knee aligned kinematically in the axis. You don't need any jugad to kind of manage that. So these are the cuts that is there. You remove the cuts, unworn side, replace it with, the, uh, with the, uh, your femoral component and the tibia has to be cut matching the, the femoral side and that's the laxity inflection that I need to show. Inflection is tight and in 
uh, on the lateral side it is lax. That's the trapezoidal space that we are looking at. And that's the completion of the process. So now you say, I don't leave this knee in varus. This is the alignment that I see. Literature evidence shows that no time that the mechanical knees are better. In fact, most of the meta-analysis across four continents show that the outcome of uh, kinematic is superior. What about the gait analysis? Again, it matches with the kinematic. What about the survival? Stephen Howell's paper, now the 12-year data published in the Journal of Arthroplasty, 98% survival shift. So generally, what are the complications in this? As if you had expected that it will be a failure in uh, coronal plane, actually it is not. There's 0.3 subsidence, it's more in the sagittal plane. There is patellofemoral inst uh, instability, again, about up to 0.4%. So the problem is not in coronal as expected, but in the sagittal plane. So the current targets are whether you are a mechanical aligner, you uh, owe uh, oh, allegiance to the mechanical line. Kinematic alignment does ignores the, um, uh, the mechanical alignment. If you are a restricted kinematic or a adjusted mechanical, you still have some, uh, uh, some target to go for in terms of a mechanical alignment. So in to summarize, it is the traditional alignment techniques may be part of the problem. An kinematic alignment is one such uh, solution. Maybe we may need a pivot shift kind of joint, an implant where there is a ball and socket on the medial side and a flat surface on the lateral. So coming back to this case, it is not a pure coronal deformity as you would like to say. There is a posterior medial defect. There is a rotation, external rotation of the tibia. You look at the patella, it's the femur is looking a proper AP. You have the patella sticking out. The internal rotation of the femur is there. If you fill up that posterior medial defect, that virus will get corrected. The trick is not to be aggressive in your cut. You could do the entire cut with a CR knee without needing even a stem. And the, if you go aggressively on that cut, then you would end up having a large gap and then you may need a stem as well. So my thought process is you understand the wear in the femur and that is, that's not very badly worn. You understand the wear in the femur, whether it is two millimeters, three millimeters, that is easy to dodge. Match it with uh, the, your replaced component and then do a similar cut to match the femoral component on the tibia, mind you, without going right to the base of the the posterior medial component. So that is what would be my suggestion. I have seen the post-op x-rays and I have seen that it was a mechanical knee that has been done. Thank you very much for your attention.